The American International School of Abuja has requested that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, provide authentic banking details for a refund of fees paid for the children of former Kogi State Governor, Yahaya Bellu. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the American International School of Abuja has requested that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, provide authentic banking details for a refund of fees paid for the children of former Kogi State Governor, Yahaya Bellu. The EFCC accused Bellu of paying $720,000 in advance as school fees for his five children who were in grades 2 to 8 from the Kogi State Government's coffers. In a letter to the EFCC's Lagos Zonal Commander, the school stated that $845,852 in tuition had been paid since September 7, 2021, and that $760,910 would be refunded after deducting previously rendered educational services. The American International School of Abuja also stated that Bello contacted the school on Friday, August 13, 2021, to pay the family school fees in advance until the students graduated from high school. At number two, Minister of Interior Olubumi Tunji Ojo stated that the federal government plans to relocate a large number of correctional facilities to improve space, security and infrastructure. Sunji Ocho revealed this while visiting Slater Medium Security Custodial Center, where 108 inmates broke out after a rainstorm damaged the facility. The minister reiterated the need to relocate correctional centers to more conducive environments away from city centers. He acknowledged the overcrowding in Nigerian correctional centers and stated that efforts are underway to create a more beneficial correctional system. The minister assured that measures would be taken to prevent such incidents from occurring in other facilities across the country. At number three, President of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, Festus Osifo, has revealed that the announcement of the new minimum wage, which is scheduled for May 1st, may not take place because negotiations are still ongoing. Osifo made the statement while speaking to journalists in Abuja on Friday. He stated that the Tripartite Committee's negotiations are still ongoing and the TUC and Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, have agreed to a figure of 615,000 Naira, up from an earlier submission of 447,000 Naira. Osifo clarified that the 615,000 Naira demand is not fixed and that a final amount will be determined through discussions with the government. He added that the Tripartite Committee chaired by Bukar Aji is still working to ensure a fair and decent wage. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shetima has reiterated the government's commitment to motivating the workforce. At number four, the Nigerian army has announced plans to relocate its naval training command headquarters from Lagos to One River State. Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ikechuku Ogala, Chief of Naval Staff, made the announcement during a visit to River State Governor Simina Lai Fubara at the Government House in Port Harcourt. Ogala thanked the River State Government for donating the Ambassador Ne Krukrubo Model Secondary School in Eleme, local government area, and the Model Secondary School in Ewelu Oyibo, local government area. He stated that the headquarters of the Naval Training Command will be relocated to one of the donated schools in Eleme. Governor Fubara praised the Navy's efforts in combating crude oil theft and assured continued support for their mandate. At number five, Katsina State Governor Malam Diko Marada has explained why some Northern governors are attending a two day symposium organized by the United States Institute of Peace, USIP, outside of Nigeria. USIP had invited 10 governors from the Northwest and North Central regions to a two day symposium on peace and security in northern Nigeria, which was scheduled to take place in the United States on April 23rd and 25th, 2024. In a statement released by his Chief Press Secretary Ibrahim Kaula Mohammed, 
Governor Rader emphasized the need for international collaboration to address Nigeria's security challenges. He emphasized the importance of global idea exchange and thanks the United States for its engagement with Nigeria's sub-national governments. The governor expressed his support for such partnerships and hopes for continued collaboration with USIP. At number six, bandits Friday invaded Maradun Town, Zamfara State, killing two people and kidnapping several others. According to the Daily Post, Faruku Shehu, an indigene of the area, said the bandits stormed the town early Friday, shooting randomly and ransacking houses. Shehu went on to say that while the exact number of abducted people was unknown, the bandits could have taken up to 30 people. Residents expressed concern about the town's insecurity and asked the Minister of State Defense, Belo Matawale, to intervene in the security situation of his home country to prevent another attack. As of the time of reporting, efforts to contact the State Police Command and the Commissioner for Security for comment had been unsuccessful. At number seven, a building collapsed in Kano State on Friday, trapping an unknown number of workers. According to Daily Trust, the incident occurred in the Kuntal area of Gwale local government area. Eyewitnesses disclosed to Daily Trust that at least 11 persons were trapped under the rubble. Daily Trust revealed that rescue operatives recovered some corpses and rescued two persons who were rushed to the hospital by officials of the Federal Road Safety Car. This is a developing story. At number eight, international lawyers representing the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, have written to Apple CEO Tim Cook, demanding answers on the sourcing of minerals used to manufacture the company's products. The lawyers shared concerns that Apple's supply chain may be tainted by blood minerals obtained through unethical mining practices from the DRC. Led by Robert Amsterdam in Washington, D.C. and William Burden in Perry, the group of lawyers also wrote to Apple subsidiaries in France, demanding a response within three weeks. At number nine, Burkina Faso has suspended the BBC and Voice of America radio networks for two weeks for airing a report accusing the army of attacks on civilians in its fight against jihadists. The decision was announced by the Communications Authority, CSC, which accused BBC Africa and VOA of broadcasting hasty and biased declarations without tangible proof against the Burkina B Army. International NGO Human Rights Watch recently reported that soldiers in Burkina Faso's jihadist Hit Not had killed at least 223 villagers, including 56 children, in two revenge attacks on February 25th. The CSC has directed internet service providers to suspend access to the sites and other digital platforms of the BBC, VOA and HRW from Burkina Bay Territory warning that any offenders could face sanctions. Finally, at number 10, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, has reported that approximately 20% of commercial milk samples in the United States tested positive for traces of bird flu, with a higher concentration in areas with infected herds. Eight states in the U.S. have confirmed cases of bird flu in dairy cattle, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. However, the FDA underscored that there is no evidence indicating the milk poses a danger to consumers or contains a live virus. The regulator said further testing is needed to determine if the pathogen remains infectious. The FDA also reassured the public that heating milk to a specific temperature renders it safe for consumption, as this process kills harmful bacteria and viruses. That's it on what's happening. You can join the conversation on our website at www.ritztv.ng. Follow us on social media at Ritz TV and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Ritz TV Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I am Frances Oti.